All right, another great episode of Let's Taco About It with my favorite comedian, Dante. Whoa, I'll take it. There you go. Uh, Dante, I know we tried to film last time at South of the Border, and that's where we're headed after. It was because we were having too much fun. We forgot there was music. We didn't have all of our equipment, right? right? It just didn't work out. But hey, you know what? We got to spend two times together now. That's right. It was it, a trick. Yeah, it was a trick. I tricked you. Right. It was like leaving a, a you know a piece of clothing at someone's house. So you have to come back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but I'm, I'm glad to have you here. And it, it, Me I too, I had buddy. so much fun last time. I had, had lots of fun. Um, and, you know, it gave me time to think about some of the questions that I'm going to ask you today, which was kind of cool because we went through the interview last time and I had time to noodle on what we talked about last time and and things have changed since we last talked wow we were just meeting yeah we were just meeting last we time. had dealt with each other for business yes right yeah and then but we'd never met so we were just meeting and now we're like doing business together yeah, now we're doing business isn't funny how life works yes okay so let's just rewind a little bit and start from the beginning you kind of sound like Russian, huh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, um, I'd like to start from probably uh, let's start with before you got into comedy mm. who are some of the people you looked up to because I know that for some people it was Richard Pryor for some people it was Eddie Murphy um yeah, you know, it, Richard Pryor, for sure, who ended up becoming a friend of mine. Like, that's incredible, right? Isn't wow, that yeah, amazing? That's, there's not a lot of people that can say that. Right. Yeah, I grew up I grew up in a town called Ridgecrest, about three hours from where we're sitting right now, out in the middle of nowhere desert. Like, I had dreams of becoming an actor and a comedian, and they were squashed because I lived in the middle of nowhere, and I thought, you can't do anything. Right. You're going to end up here forever and maybe working on the military base at the, you know, and all this stuff. And my dad was in charge of bringing acts to the base. And one of the acts he brought through was Ray Charles. I got to meet him. And then he brought in um, a, an improv group. And this improv group inspired me because I really wanted to be a comedian. I was already listening to Bill Cosby and um, Cheech and Chong and all these guys. I had all their albums memorized and it was great. And then, um, I saw this group and I, I turned to my little buddy and I was like, we should do comedy. And he was like, okay. So we wrote some jokes and it was pretty funny. Well, what uh, were one of your first, or what was one of your first jokes? Then? Okay, so I started stand up twice. I started at seven, so I'll give you that first joke. Okay. And then I started again at 15 and I'll give you that first joke. Okay, okay? you're in front of a crowd right now. I'm in front of a crowd, I'm seven years old, but there's always two of us, so I have to say that because this one, we were doing an impression of a television, and it's 1978, <laughs> I think, or something. I'm seven years old. Anyway, so I would talk, and then if I flipped around, that's like changing the channel, right? Yeah. And then he'd flip, and he would be the new TV show or commercial. So it went something like, Hi, I'm Farrah Fawcett, and my favorite food <laughs> is... And then I'd turn around, and he'd go, Alpo dog food. <laughs> it's the best dog... You know, and then we'd go, and it was just every joke was kind of like... Right, that. yeah. Um, a misunderstanding of words. And then when I became 15, I did stand up again in 86, and um, I had a partner named The Wolf, Gerald Wolf. And our first joke, it's, it's two jokes in one. You're gonna get two for the price of one. Right. It was a hitchhiker, uh, no, a Polish hitchhiker, okay? <laughs> Back in the, in the uh, 80s, for some reason, Polish jokes were about them being stupid. I don't yeah. know why. But it was a big deal, and so here was the joke. So this was a Polish hitchhiker. <laughs> and I thought it was gonna be you put your thumb down. <laughs> oh, that's funny too. And then a Polish hitchhiker in the rain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my first couple of jokes, you guys. I, I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So so uh, you had the comedy bug in you. Yeah. What made you jump from, you know, that to getting on stage? Good question. So as soon as we decided, me and my partner decided to do stand up, we did it at my school and it was horrible. Horrible. Like we were so bad. My ex-girlfriend is sitting in the front row with her new boyfriend and they're just both looking at me like this. Like that. Like I went home and cried, told my mom I'm 
quitting school, don't ever send me back, please, you know, all this stuff. No, you're going back tomorrow. Man, you'd think I would have quit comedy then. Let's go back to before, when I was about seven, right before I started stand-up. The first joke I ever wrote, this kid, sixth grader, cuts in front of me in line to go to the eat. And I was like, man, this ass. So I tap him, and I thought of a joke, because he had a big nose. And I said, hey, your relatives didn't come over on the Mayflower. They came over on Noah's Ark as the elephant. <laughs> and like kids laughed and this kid didn't even flinch. He just kicked me in the balls as fast as he could nice. and turned around. I went to the hospital. I spent a week there. It was for my first joke. And then I became a comic. Those were my big experiences. And I went, that's what I want to do. What do you find um, most difficult about being a comedian? Mm, most difficult is to travel. The travel. Yeah, the getting there is the fun part. Being there is the fun part. Meeting new people, being um, in a new city and town and making friends that you go back and see is all great. But it's getting up on a Thursday at four in the morning to catch a 6 a.m. flight that, you know, stops, I don't know, three hours out of the way and then finally makes its way over to where you're going and then someone picks you up after you've been at the airport for 45 minutes and then they take you to the hotel and you're starving and there's no food and then you go do your first show on a Thursday and then you go eat somewhere bad, but just getting there yeah, sucks. Yeah, I've, I've um, seen stories on YouTube of comedians and the struggles that they've had, you know, in the car and, you know, why, you know just listening to some of the, the stories, but I would think that, um, you know, keeping original content would be really hard to do being that there's so many now nowadays comedy has been you know so saturated with new comedians i mean not to say that that's a bad thing but um what i've been seeing lately is comedians using other comedians jokes you should put that camera on you you're very interesting you think so i do um, You're more interesting than two cameras on me. Okay, that's cool. Magically, you ready? On three. And he's going to appear now. Bling! I am here. There he is. So, I'm not as dressed as nice as you. I just, I'm wearing a sport coat. Yeah. That's it. That's the, that's the great thing about sports coats. Like, you could just wear anything and then sports And if I took this off, we're wearing basically the same thing. Pretty much. Right. As soon as I put this on, he's like, wow, you're fancy. And I don't have holes in my jeans. Right, but I still look fancy. You look great. Right, and I've got, great. I've got holes in the jeans. You know, it's, it's God, the coat. It's the coat. The Pope blessed those jeans. Yeah. They're holy. <laughs> they're holy. Yeah. 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 But, but, uh, and they're like a fine hotel. They've got a big ballroom. Uh, oh. <laughs> Not sure I needed to know that, but hey. <laughs> my dad just used to say it all the time. I, that was his yeah. joke. I, I, unfortunately, like unfortunately, I don't have any ballroom. I don't know if that's better or not, but... <laughs> <laughs> you made me snort. That was a good one. Um, so let's get back into... Yes. Uh, let's get back into the question of yes. the day. Now, I asked you earlier if the comedy world has a problem with plagiarism and people... Mm. Um, Using because it's if you really think about it, the context of a joke is just some words that are orchestrated in the same right. sentence, right? And anybody could really do that that knows a dictionary, right? There's going to be more overlap than not, right? With most comedians, so I would say this when it comes to topical comedians, there's going to be a lot of overlap because if you know, like, for example. Carlos Mencia got in trouble for the worst joke he could have gotten in trouble for. It was